episode. As usual, I like to do a recap or revision of the previous lesson. So last week we did um, sort of a bit of food, um, a bit on ordering things. Um, so l'alimentation et la commande. So just doing some basic vocabulary, because um, these are the ones you'll probably hear the most. Um, so let me get my little annotation there. Does anybody remember the vocabulary for breakfast? Uh, petit déjeuner. That's right. Le petit déjeuner. Okay. Very good. And what about for lunch? Déjeuner. Déjeuner. Le déjeuner. And that's masculine, is it, Taylor? Yeah, most of these are masculine. So um, breakfast, lunch, and dinner are definitely masculine. I think dessert is also masculine. Le dessert, yeah, I think it's masculine. Um, general rules on masculine and feminine is that 95% of nouns are masculine, but occasionally the rule will change. So if you don't know, go with the masculine and most people will be like, yeah, that's fine. But if it sounds funny, then you can usually infer that it's a feminine now. But again, I still get it wrong. And I've now been speaking um, French for five years. So, <laughs> you know, it's a thing you just learn over time. And it's, a lot of the time it's a memory thing, unfortunately. <laughs> But yeah, so these are masculine, definitely breakfast and lunch are masculine, dinner is masculine and dessert is. I think goûter, because it's a bit of a strange one, it's a verb that became a noun, so I can't really remember, but yeah, you have goûter, okay, for snacks, okay, usually with a little accent on the uh, the U there, but I can't find that on my keyboard because I have an English keyboard. So, and then dinner. Anybody got one for dinner? Isn't it like dinner? How do we spell it though? Um, dinner? Yeah. So it's basically spelt like this and the I has a little... Um, like basically has a little accent on it as well, like a upside down, no, sorry, a little arrow sort of accent where the dot of the eye is. That's le dinner, okay? Uh, and I don't have that on my keyboard either, unfortunately, so I can't really show you that one. But yeah, so these are your four main meals. You also have things like um, le dessert or l'apéro, like to have an uh, apéritif before you might eat at a restaurant. Um, and yeah, that's about it. Any questions on those? Should Goethe have le in front of it or le? See, this is one I'm not sure about. I would possibly go with it being masculine, like I would say le Goethe, but um, I'm not 100% sure. But yeah, I would probably go with the masculine just to be safe. So you can say le Goethe. And it would usually, would probably work. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so if any other questions, guys? No? Cool. So we'll just scroll down a little bit to get the, um, all of those little characters in order. And then I'll see if you can remember any of the names of these foods from last week. So in English, we've got soup, beef, lettuce, orange juice, tea, cheese, bread, and prawns, or a prawn, I guess. So I'll give you like maybe a minute to sort of remember. You can always, you know, go back to last week's vocabulary and see if you can find it. But basically, I'll give you about a minute to try and think of 
of these and then we'll go through it together. Did we do soup last last Monday? Um, we might not have, but um, it's it's a lot easier than you think. <laughs> I'm guessing is the same one. <laughs> it is, but whether it's feminine or masculine, that is for you to determine. Okay, guys, we'll have a little go together. So the first one, uh, soup, any ideas? La soup? Yeah, la soup. Okay, it's a uh, feminine. And what about beef? Le boeuf. Le boeuf, that's right. Okay. What about lettuce? La salad. La salad. Very good. Yeah. So basically all lettuce is called salad in France. Um, unless it's like, um, I think cabbage is different. Then it's la choux. And... Spinach, which is épinard, so l'épinard and le ch la choux, which is yeah, cabbage and spinach. But most other greens, they'll just call it la salade. And what about our orange juice? Le joux. So le joux, okay. And then how do we t like tell people that it's orange juice? Orange. La joux. Sorry. Orange? D'orange, exactly. Okay, so le jus d'orange, okay, and you can change the de something for any type of juice. So de pomme, apple juice, de tomate, tomato juice, um, de ananas, pineapple juice, so all these different kinds of juice, you just put the um, preposition de and then the name of the fruit or vegetable that you're making it from. And uh, tea, anybody remember tea? Le thé. Le thé. That's right, hang on. Put the little one there. Le thé. Does anybody remember coffee? Le café. Le café. Exactly. So we'll put that one up. Le café. Okay. You have le café ou le thé. Okay. So coffee or tea. Usually if you're at a café, they'll ask that. Um, then cheese. Anyone know cheese? Le fromage. le fromage. Yes, le fromage. Okay. And bread. Le pain. Le pain. Le pain. Le pain. Yes. Okay, so le pain. Not the pain. Okay. It's not how they say that, they say pain. Okay, you can kind of hear the N through the end of your nose, like up here, le pain. Okay. 
So again, Scott, that's possibly an example of where you can hear the end of a word. Okay. That's where the rules get a little bit fuzzy. Mm. It's not a hard letter N, is it? It's not that hard though. So if I said like le pan, you could hear it. It's a bit more Spanish. Um, but in French, they sort of pronounce it in the nose, but it's more like le pan. Like you kind of just close your nose or the back of your throat to kind of indicate the N rather than producing it. Yeah. And then the last one, prawn. La crevette. La crevette. Very good. Yeah. It's not that right. Have it. Okay. So those are just a couple of basics, a um, little bit of revision. There were some more things that we did last week. So please feel free to access that worksheet from last week. Um, it does have a couple of more items under, you know, dairy products, meat products, fruit, vegetables, etc. Did anybody have any foods that they wanted to know the name for? I have a quick question about coffee. Yes. You know, in Italy, you can pretty much only get black coffee. Mm -hmm. Is that the same in France or are there different types of coffee? Um, so, uh, but basically, yes. Like the short answer would be yes. So it's very similar to the Italian coffee culture where if you order le café, they, ex they assume that you're talking about like an espresso or just black coffee. If you wanted to order like a cappuccino or a latte, you could say that, like the Italian words, like un cappuccino or un latte, and they might understand it, but more often they say like um, un café du lait. So a cafe, like coffee with milk. milk. Okay, cool. So I'll write that. So un café um, du lait. Okay. Everybody see that one? Un café de lait. Un café de lait, s'il vous plaît. Sometimes you see instead of the du, you see it with a, with a u. What's the difference? Yeah, so you might say un café au lait. Mm. And that you can... I guess, yeah. So that raises a good point, yeah. So café... Okay. So I think technically, Scott, that's the more correct one that you've identified. So café au lait. Okay. Um, but if you also say café du lait, they understand as well. So that's a good point. Um, so you might see on a menu in a café, either en café, uh, en café du lait or en café au lait. Okay, the two. Um, en thé. Similarly, when they talk about teas, you should say if you want milk as well, because otherwise they assume you just want black tea with no milk. Okay, so similar to that. Okay, uh, any other questions along those lines, guys? Um, how do they say green tea? Ah, en thé vert. Wow. Thé vert. Okay. okay, so a green tea. Okay, so vert, which we'll cover later with our colors, but mm -hmm. um, vert means green. Mm -hmm. So basically you're saying the same thing we do in English. So mm -hmm. en thé vert. All right. Um, you might get... Uh, te chai, okay, chai tea, not as common in Europe at the moment, like 
at, like in France particularly, but it is becoming more popular. Um, anyone else Just trying to think? Um, that's really it. Like if you, they've signed to become a bit more aware of other ways to say coffee, like the cappuccino, latte, things like that. But um, they probably won't know if you say a flat white, for example. It's very much an Australian concept. Um, but yeah, sticking to things like un café, un café au lait, uh, un thé or un thé vert, okay? That's the main thing. Um, oh, somebody's drawing on my screen. So is café, is that instant or like an espresso? Um, so it will depend on the, like basically the standard of the café you're in. So some, like a really sort of cheap cafe, it'll be like instant coffee and some water. Otherwise, it will be like a coffee machine, like, you know, makes a proper cup of coffee. It just depends on the establishment. But it basically does mean just a black coffee. So that can be an espresso shot or like not quite an Americano, but basically like there's a bit like a long black, basically, yeah. if that makes sense. Again, I don't order very much coffee. I'm not a big coffee drinker. Um, so mine was basically tea and hot chocolates whenever I go anywhere. Um, and the French are quite good at making hot chocolates. Like if you go to, like I always really like their hot chocolates because they make it with proper melted chocolates in, in certain cafes with like whipped cream and all kinds of things. So that was always quite nice. Does anybody remember the word for hot chocolate in French? Chocolat chaud? Yes, en chocolat chaud. Okay. There we go. Cool. Um, any other questions about those guys? It's okay. No. Cool. So um, we're just going to keep scrolling on, I guess. Um, do, 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 do. Okay. Oh, out of the way, it's scrolling down. All right. So I just wanted to briefly recap the commands or the orders that we went through last week. I have put the vocabulary in the box on the top. Mind you, I have not conjugated the verbs. So there's vouloir, avoir, boire, aller, and faire. Okay, those are your verbs. The rest are either pronouns or uh, nouns. Okay, um, so I'm going to give you like a couple of minutes to have a go at putting those together and then we'll go through it together. Okay. So, um, number one, j'ai un faire une réservation pour deux un. What's the first word we're looking for? Je vous. Not voir, but it is the vouloir. Okay, that's the right verb. What do we need to create? What's the conjugation or the form that we need? Conditional. So, would it be je voudrais? Excellent, yes. Je voudrais faire une réservation pour deux. Mm. Okay. Voudrais is the conditional form of vouloir. Does anybody remember what vouloir means? Want. To want, that's right. So to want. Okay. All right, so I would like. Okay. I would like to make a reservation. Okay, je voudrais faire une réservation. Right. And de quoi? Like what, what comes after de? Person. Person. Okay. Your wife. Person. Okay. Uh, number two. À 18 heures. Mm. 
s'il vous plaît. S'il vous plaît. S'il vous plaît. Yes, absolutely. And is that the formal or the informal? Formal. The formal, that's right. So there are two. There's the vous and what's the other pronoun for you? Tu. 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 That's right. So you have tu and vous. Okay. Informal and formal. Okay. So you would say sit to play to someone that you know, like a friend or your family. But if you're out in public with someone you don't know as well, use the formal or the more polite version with vous. Okay. And this week, air. Air. That's right. Okay. This week, air. And what does air mean? Hours. 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 That's right. So they don't say um, like o'clock. They say hours. So um, 18 hours or um, 13 hours or seven hours. Um, and yeah, I've made a little error, but it's actually good for you to know. Um, next to 18, there's a little H. And you will see that around France for the, which is basically shorthand for er. Okay, so you'll see 18H or from 9H to, um, the, um, yeah, um, 18H, which is usually like the opening and closing times for something. And it just means from like 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., you know? So that's just for your information. Okay, so bonsoir, j'ai un, une réservation pour un personne. Anyone have any idea? Avoir. Not avoir. Fait. Sorry? Fait. No. Oh, yes, faire. It's faire. But how do we write it in the past form? Does anybody remember passé composé from last week? Fait. So not fait with the T, but F-A-S because it's with je, okay, with the I pronoun, okay? J'ai fait une réservation, okay? What is it with the T? So um, you have... Uh, G and tu, which are fait, okay? Then you have il, elle, en, which are with the T. Ah, okay. yeah. So like the, um, how is that, like the second person, no, first person pronoun, second person pronoun. Um, so yeah, il, elle, en. Then you have um, vous, which is ferré. Okay. Then you have nous, which is ferrant. And then il, elle, um, bon. Okay. Can everybody see that? Mm -hmm. Cool. So this is um, basically how most of the terminations in French finish. You have J and tu, which tend to be the same, not always, but most of the time. Um, then you have il, elle, on, which are always the same. Then you have vous, which tends to end in ez for regular verbs. And you have nu, which ends in ons for regular verbs. And then the il, elle, like a plural they, okay. Um, it usually changes, but it's um, in a standard or regular verb. It's the first letter of the, um, of the verb ending with O, N, T. But that can change. That one's a bit of a weird one. 
All right, so how many people? In reservation pour how many people? Deux. Oui. Deux. Okay. Deux personnes. Mm. Okay, how many people is that? Deux. Two. Two. Two people. Uh, number four. Mm, vous choisissez. Avez. Avez. Okay. And what is that verb for avez? Have. To have. To have. That's right. Okay. So avoir. Okay. To have. And faire is to make. Okay. But it also is to do. Like you'll, they often use um, faire for things that they make and things that they do. It's a dual utilization. Okay. It's a bit like um, have in English. Like I'm going to have breakfast doesn't mean that I'm going to physically hold it or have it. It means I'm going to eat it. So it's a multi-use verb. Um, okay, number five, guys. Oui, j'ai un prendre un, s'il vous plaît. Je vais prendre. Excellent. So it is the aller, okay, but it's not va. It's V. Okay, je vais, je vais, je vais prendre. Okay, for the je, it's a little different on this one. But you're absolutely correct with aller. Okay. And what does it mean, aller? Go. 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 That's right. So aller is to go. Okay. Um, so, sort of think back to um, comment allez-vous, okay, how are you going or how are you, okay, they use aller um, rather than uh, être, to be, like we do in English, how, how are you, they say, like, how going you, okay. And then, what am I taking? Oui, je vais prendre... La soup. La soup. Excellent. Okay. Okay. Uh, et qu'est-ce que vous voudrez? Non, voudrez. Non. What? What? And how do we do it with uh, vous? Bouvet. Okay, bouvet. Qu'est-ce que vous bouvez? Okay, what would you like to drink? Okay, so boire, to drink. And then the last one, number seven. Ah, je voudrais le vent rouge. Rouge. Okay. And uh, what color is that? Red. Red. Okay, so I would like red wine, please. Okay. Any questions about any of that, guys? It's a little tricky, that one, but, you know, really good job because there's lots of different grammar and lots of different vocabulary there so I'm, I'm really impressed that you were able to sort of get through most of that. Could you, could you um, read, oh sorry, speak number three please? Number three? Yeah. Yes. Uh, bonsoir, j'ai fait une réservation pour deux personnes. Yep, thanks. Okay, yeah. Um, and usually after that, they might ask, oh, under what name? 
and it's like Unom Taylor. Okay, that um, A U, that Unom. Okay, that one there. Okay, say Unom de Taylor. Okay, Unom Taylor. Uh, under Taylor or under your surname, if that's what you put it under. Okay. Um, you might hear the inverse of avez-vous choisi. You might say, you might hear um, vous avez choisi. Okay. So just the avez and the vous might switch places, but it's the same question. It's so like just a little thing that sometimes happens in French. They switch the auxiliaries and the um, subjects around in the sentence. Um, and yeah, that's about it. Any questions before we move on? No? Okay. Um, so just get rid of these ones. And then we'll scroll down. So we are now moving on to the first of our topics today, which is numbers or le chiffre. Okay. And for those of you who've been here over the last sort of two to three weeks, um, we have gone over some of the numbers. Um, and I found this uh, graphic to be quite nice because it gives you the, like the number and the spelling for the the name. Sometimes it's just the pronunciation that's a bit strange. Like when you're reading, you're like, oh, it doesn't look like it should sound like that. But um, we'll see. Does anybody want to have a go at any of like basically zero to 10? Those of us who have been here for the last few weeks. I'll try zero to 10. Okay. After that, I don't know. <laughs> okay. So one to 10, we'll just do one to 10 for now. Okay, don't need to go any higher. Mm -hmm. okay. Zero, mm -hmm. un, deux, mm -hmm. trois, quatre, cinq, six, sept, huit, neuf, dix. Excellent. That, that's really good, Anna. Really good. That's all I know. <laughs> that's good, though. That's very good. Anybody else want to have a go? Zero, mm -hmm. un, deux, trois, quatre, cinq, six, Set, tweet, nerf, dis. Excellent. Yes. Uh, anyone else want to have a practice? Sure. Mm -hmm. Zero, un, deux, trois, quatre, cinq, six, set, tweet, nerf, dis. Very good, guys. Yeah, excellent. Yeah, that first one, zero, with the French R, that can be a bit tricky. Um, quatre, with the R again, so quatre. Uh, and sank. Okay, number five. Uh, it doesn't look like it should read like that, but it's basically sank. Okay. Um, trois. Okay. Again, it's a good indication with the you don't pronounce the the s on that one. Again, Scott, that like, trois, not trois. Okay. Um, and it's un, un, de trois. So just being careful with the un, okay, it's un. We're trying to sort of come in through the, the nose here. So zero, un, deux, trois, quatre, cinq, six, sept, huit, neuf, dix. But that was all very well done, guys. Like very impressed. Um, then we'll go into the teens. These ones get a bit interesting as they do in... English as well. Um, but basically, you have onze, douze, treize, quatorze, quinze, seize, dix-sept, dix-huit, dix-neuf, vingt. Okay. Does anyone want to have a go at that one from 11 till 20? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Onze, douze, treize, quatorze, quinze, 
16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Excellent. Yeah, that was very, very good, Lara. Um, yeah, like the main ones are those like 13, 14, 15, 16, like 14, 15, 16. I find those ones get a bit tricky for people. Um, anyone else want to have a go? Yes, very good. Yeah, exactly. So similar to um, um, basically once you get past the teens, the pattern tends to repeat. So you have the tens number. Okay, like a 20 or a 30 or 40 or whatever it is. Um, and then you basically repeat one to nine. Okay, so similar to English where we go 21 or 35 or 49, same, same principle in French. Um, so you start with the 20s. Okay, so 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. 27, 28, 29, 30. Okay. Again. 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Does anyone want to have a go? Okay. Um, von, 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 de, von, 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 Very good. Very good, Anna. Yeah. So, trente. So, the trente. Okay. Yeah. Uh, 21, so 21, so 1 and 20, it's like the, it's the strange mm -hmm. one, this one. So it always happens for the first letter of each, sorry, the first number of each tens. Mm -hmm. So you have 20 and 1, 30 and 1, 40 and 1, 50 and 1, etc. Um, and yeah, but it, at the same time, it's so quick that you almost don't hear the et in between. So 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, etc. It, it, it's quite quick. Um, and a lot of people, depending on where you speak French, okay, so French of the metropole, so France itself might speak it one way, but if you're from like Swiss France, like the French part of Switzerland or from Belgium or from New Caledonia or one of the other countries that speaks French. While you may have the basics of French, you might not pronounce it the same way. Yeah. Anyway, sorry about that guys. Um, so, uh, does anybody else want to have a go at the 20s? Yeah, okay. Um, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. 30. Good. Yeah, very good. So you can hear how the pattern repeats with just one to nine. Generally, once you get past the 20s, then you have 30, which is 30. Okay. Then you have 40, which is 40. Okay. 40. Then you have 50, which is 50. Okay. So, 30, 40, 50. 
All right. And the same pattern. So 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, and then 60 is 60. Okay. So, where's my little annotation? There it is. So, then you have uh, 60. Okay, 60. Okay. Then, uh, I don't know how many of you are in the uh, Facebook group, um, but there was a meme that was posted about basically anything past 69, the numbers in French get a bit strange. So you've got 60, okay, 60. Then 70 is 70. Okay, so 60, 10. <laughs> All right. And if you thought that one was funny, then you have 80, which is, sorry, 80. Okay, so four 20s. All right. And then you get to 90, which is, Quatre vingt dix. Okay, so four twenty ten. So you're doing maths even as you're doing the numbers. Okay, so most of the time it follows the pattern. So from zero to about sixty nine, it's pretty good. Um, then you have the seventies, which are basically 60 and the teens. So you go 60, 10, 60, 11, 60, 12, 60, 13, so on and so forth. Okay. Then you have 80 and then it goes as the 20 does. So one to nine. Then you have 88, sorry, 90. Okay. Which is, um, again, repeating the teens again. All right. Don't worry if you're a little lost. Um, I'm still lost trying to figure out if I'm saying the correct thing for my birth date, which is 1995, uh, which is 1995 in French. Um, so it gets, it gets complicated, but um, again, it's a practice thing. The most I want you guys to practice is would be basically up to this 59, 60 mark. Okay, get familiar and comfortable with these numbers because the rest of them from like 70 onwards rely on you being um, across the tens, the teens and the pattern. Okay, from one to nine. Okay, is there any questions on those? No? No. So I've also given you a couple of the questions that you're most likely to hear with numbers. So, quel âge avez-vous? Okay, how old are you? Um, or quel âge as-tu? Okay, from a friend uh, or family or just somebody who's quite colloquial. Um, then you have, il est quelle heure? Okay, what time is it? Okay, so thinking back to our 24 hour clock. So, il est, mm -mm, so, il est 18 heures. So, it is 18 o'clock, which is six o'clock in the evening. All right. Um, then you have like your address. So, quel est votre adresse? Quel est ton adresse? Um, so, depending on your house number or whatever, you'd be using your numbers. The first two are the most common though, your age and the time. So just have a 
little memory with those. Memorize those. Okay. And what time is it? Okay. And so remembering with collage, okay, you've got the formal and the informal. Okay, so the to and the vu, and that changes how the avoir is conjugated. Okay, so the verb avoir, which is to have, is uh, changed depending on the pronoun. Right. Any questions with those ones, guys? No, I'm just writing it down. Okay, easy. How would you ask what is your phone number? Ah, so you have, again, the, depending on whether it is um, formal or informal. So, yeah. Quel est votre numéro? Okay. So, votre numéro est ton numéro. So, your number. What is your number? Okay. Thank you. Good. And the way they do it is they group it in um, doubles, in pairs. So you do things like um, 04, 02, 88, uh, 20, uh, 36. Okay, that would be the way that you group your numbers. It's by twos. So it's like 04, 02, 20. Uh, six. Okay, that would be your number in France. They don't group it the same way when they repeat it. Um, so yeah, and they have quite short numbers by comparison to Australia that has like, what is it? Six, six, 10 numbers. I think the standard number in France is about eight characters. Okay. Any other questions, guys, or is that good for now? All right. So we're going to move on to the um, colours, which should hopefully take us only a couple more minutes. So we should wrap up roughly on time. Um, <clears throat> just let me know if you need to run off or if you have any questions before then and just pop them in the, um, uh, the chat and I'll try and answer them either by the Facebook page or, you know, when I see you next time. So you have the colors or les couleurs, all right? So we've already discussed this first one, okay? Green, does anybody remember what it is, green? Verde. Verde, that's right. So where's my annotation, there it is. So there. Okay. In this case, it's vert because l'herbe is feminine. So grass is feminine. So l'herbe est verte. Okay. The grass is green. Then you have le soleil. Okay. So le soleil is the sun. Sure. That's right. So you might have heard of the Sun King, Louis XIV, or well, Louis XIV. He was called Le Roi du Soleil, or the Sun King. All right. So Le Soleil. Eh? Does anybody know the color? Like yellow in French? Jaune. Jaune. No, oh, the day. Okay, Jaune. Okay, the soleil is jean, or the sun is yellow. La rose est rouge. Rouge. Remembering our wines, our red wines and our white wines. So, rouge. <coughs> La rose est rouge. So, the rose is red. Le ciel est 
the sky is blue. 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 Okay. So blue. Easy way to remember it is just the letters are switched around. Okay. Same letters, just a different combination. So the ciel est bleu, the sky is blue. Le nuage est le nuage blanc. blanc. Okay. So the cloud is white. Okay. Now blanc and blanche. Okay. So you have blanc et blanche. Okay. And they mean the same thing. They both mean white, but it changes depending on whether the subject is feminine or masculine. Okay. Same with vert and vert. Okay. So you have vert et vert. Okay. Most of the other ones are pretty, they're, they're spelt, either spelt the same or they sound the same. So they don't get changed all that much, but green, um, blue, um, and I think another one, but I can't quite remember at this point. Any questions about those before we go on to the next round? Is the pronunciation of green different depending on whether it's masculine or feminine? Mm, no, it's still green. Um, it just, it, again, the way in which uh, adjectives change in French is not the way in which we do it in English because our language doesn't have gender. So the French treat adjectives simply as extensions to nouns. So the translation is the same. It still means the grass is green or um, um, mon échappe est vert. Okay, my or it's not, but it like a sharp is uh, masculine, so I would use the masculine uh, adjective to describe a masculine object, but the translation is the same. Oh, sorry, Taylor. I mean, is it when you pronounce vert or vert? Oh, 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 you mean the production? Okay, yeah, so it is slightly different. So you have um, vert with the T, and then you have vert, no T. Okay, so you have vert and vert. Yep. Okay, and that's the main difference. And then you have blanc and blanche. Okay. Um, I'm just trying to think, is there anything else? I think there is one, but it's coming up. So um, that's about it. All right, has everybody got those down? Yes. Cool. Uh, we'll move on to the next one. So, what color is the cat? Noir. Noir. Okay. Noir. The cat is black. Or it's a black cat. Uh, le chien est marron. Marron, that's right. Okay. Brown. And la fleur est violet. Violet. So Purple or violet, depending on how you say your purples. So they say violet. And this is the one I wasn't sure about, Scott, is um, whether violet changes, depending on if it's feminine or masculine. I'm not sure about this one. I think it's right. You add T-E on the end. I think that's correct. So it would become violet. Okay, so hang on. So like that. Okay, so la, la fleur est violette. Okay. Yeah, that seems right to me. Yeah, cool. And then uh, the house, la maison. La maison est? Mm. 
Rose. Sorry? Rose. Rose. Can't yeah. my eyes. <laughs> yeah, no, no, it's fine. I, I think it was just a bit quiet because you had it right. It's 100%, 100% correct. Um, so, la maison est rose. Okay, think of uh, Edith Piaf, la vie en rose. Okay, life in rosy hues or the pink life, I guess, if you're being literal. Um, so, yeah, rose. Not to be confused with red, which is rouge. Okay. And then, le poisson est... Orange. Orange, yes. <laughs> As you might have guessed, this is one of my favorite French words, just simply because it's exactly the same in English, but I prefer <laughs> the French pronunciation. So, le poisson est orange. Oh, that's a tough one. Um, yes, so... Those are your most primary colors. You also have um, gray, which is gris, okay? Or um, gris, if it's feminine, okay? Okay. Um, you also have, does anybody have a color that they want to know? Mm. Do they have a word for like burgundy, Ooh. like a darker red? Um, I think they do. Could just or be, how would you say just... light or dark? Ah, light or dark. dark. <sighs> you know what? I can't remember. I will have to <laughs> okay. um, come back to you next <laughs> week. <laughs> um, hang on. I can just look it up. Hang on just a second. Um, ah, okay, so I should have known at least light, okay, because it's clair, okay, so light, and then you have um, foncé, okay, for dark, okay, so um, uh, clair bleu, okay, light blue, or foncé bleu, dark blue, okay. Um, and yes, clair will change depending on the feminine or masculine, as will foncé. Okay, there's not much difference in the pronunciation. It's very slight to English ears, um, but French people sort of put more of a emphasis on the e with foncé and foncé okay and then you have clair and clair like you you're basically more rolling the r when it's feminine that's the best way i can describe it um yeah that's there is probably a word for burgundy i think it could even be burgundy because it comes from the French word, but I'm not 100% sure on those mixed colors. I know they have mauve, which is for like a mixture of purple and red. So similar to what we use, the word mauve. Um, but yeah, I don't, it hasn't come across, like I haven't come across it all that much with the different shades of color. Um, yeah. Was there anything else you wanted to know guys today? Or was there any thing that wasn't clear previously in another lesson that you'd like to go over? Uh, I did mean to ask if you guys were interested in any other topics going into next week. I think the, the basic conversations are quite good. Basic conversations, like um, like like you've been doing, ordering at a restaurant, making reservation. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, we're doing a little bit like 
what, in what that we find? Sorry, Anna. I'm sorry. Um, based on the revision, do do basic conversations that, mm -hmm. on what we have learned. Yeah. Um, so, would you be looking to do more like uh, asking for directions or uh, maybe go over the introduction stuff, like my name is, my age is, etc. Yeah. Yeah. And also ordering yeah. at the restaurant. Direct, directions would be good. Directions would be good, yeah. And yeah. going over the ordering at the restaurant stuff again. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yep. Um, what else? And have turns. We, I think we need to practice um, speaking, Pronou yes. pronouncing the words. Probably each of us have a go twice or repeat the same thing. Hmm. Would you like to have a go at practicing any of the colors? Yeah, anything we've learned till today. So anything will be useful. Yeah, it's, it's, I think the issue with any language learning is that it's trying to weigh up the vocabulary that you have mm -hmm. um, and giving you the grammar that you need to know in order to use it. Um, and usually language lessons are more than an hour long because you spend like the first half of the lesson practicing the grammar and then mm -hmm. you use the second hour to practice the grammar yeah. that you learned. I struggle with congregations. Oh, congregations. conjugations. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So if you want, um, maybe next week, because we probably will go over the like ordering at a restaurant stuff, that's a good opportunity to go over conjugation for a couple of those different mm -hmm. verbs, like um, vouloir, avoir, faire, um, aller, boire, manger. So all of those verbs are used when you're just like doing things at the restaurant. Um, so maybe next week we'll spend a little bit of time doing grammar. People mm -hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, generally. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Yeah. Okay. Um, I might also get you to practice introductions. So I might see how good I am at doing like the break off rooms. Maybe I'll put you in different rooms and you can practice together. And then you can come back and then practice with the group. Mm -hmm. Is that something that would be interesting to people? Yeah. I'll think yeah so. Okay. So, yeah, so basically I'll just make some notes. So ordering introductions, asking for directions. Was that another one I heard? Yes. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, and, yeah, just some verb practice. But yeah, Anna's um Anna's got a good idea. If you gave us a chance to speak each, let's say sentence twice, um, just to yeah. nail or not nail, but to improve our pronunciation. Yeah. So the one you had today was, um, oui, je vais prendre la soupe, s'il vous plaît. Mm -hmm. But um, the prendre, do you roll the R? Or yeah, the prendre. Yeah, that's a hard one. Like prong is always, it, it will still trip me up. Technically, I don't even pronounce it, pronounce it correctly um, because my pronunciation is a bit more, um, either it's too English or it's too German for some reason. But um, I blame that on spending most of my time in France on the eastern border near Germany. So the people there had quite distinct accents. So I say things like prendre with like quite the glutteral pronunciation. Um, but yeah, basically when you, like I'd be happy to get people to practice more if that's what you're interested in doing. Um, so things like we go back up to like the commands and I would get us to do the vocabulary again and then get you all to sort of, you know, repeat it if that's what you felt comfortable doing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that, that, that was Anna's suggestion, which um, to me makes makes sense. Yeah, exactly. So um, definitely happy to do that. I might 
therefore prepare something similar to that exercise we did today for next week. And then, Mm -hmm. yeah, basically I'll take on your suggestion, Anna, to Mm -hmm. get you all to practice it and then out loud and get better and more comfortable with those sort of harder pronunciation um, Mm -hmm. things. Um, Because, yeah, it's hard. But you guys are doing really well and you did well with the numbers today. So I was Mm -hmm. quite impressed with all of that. Um, And, yeah. This exercise that we have on the screen, should we practice this for next Saturday? Oh, sorry, next Monday? Um. Yes, if you want, we can do that one as like an introduction to get you into the swing of things. Um, And then I'll also probably make some other ones similar to this. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I might do like, this is quite sort of thrown together. So I might make conversations that are more based on making the um, reservation. Okay. So you'll have like Mm -hmm. two people in the conversation like a dialogue so like the waiter might be pick up the phone and be like oh bonsoir blah 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 and then you have to like fill in blanks between the two people Mm -hmm. um and then i might have another scenario when you walk into the restaurant and uh you have to announce that you've made the reservation your name the time etc okay Mm -hmm. then i might get another scenario which is about you know ordering something to eat off the menu okay mm-hmm. getting you to use vocabulary from food okay uh, and drinks of course um and yeah see how that goes yeah sounds good okay happy to do that um and then yeah i think i'll do that and then maybe next week we'll also do some maybe some directions introduce you to asking for directions and do something similar but we'll just see how long it takes to get through the scenarios yeah mm-hmm. okay cool well thank you for that today guys um that was a really good thank lesson you. um and yeah i'll see you next monday same time same link really um and yeah um thank you for your participation it was good seeing you all and yeah, take care. Thank you. Thanks, Tyler. À la prochaine, as Thank they you. say. Till next time. Bye.